did it with a near-perfect mixture of offense and defense. Bob, Florida State will be wanting to do the same thing against the Arizona State Stun Devils. The question is, can they do it? Set up the run first and then get the pass play going. Against Cincinnati, the Seminoles used nine running plays on the draw, one drive, including a trap play to Rosie Snipes, and then they came back with a dive play on the uh, handoff to the fullback, Cedric Jones. Another big hard run by him. Then, of course, it's the handoff to the speedster, the guy that can really get it done, Greg Allen. He's a hard-nosed running back. All this sets up the pass plays. Watch Kelly Lowry find a wide-open Tony Johnson on the sideline. The running play sets up the pass play. On the last touchdown drive, same thing. Two plays in a row, Rosie Snipes gallops for 11 yards. That sets up a big play again. Bob Davis to Jesse Hester for six points. The run play sets up the pass. Five days later, then came the D against Louisville. Florida State looked like a group of sluggers on defense who would gang tackle a practice dummy. It was without doubt their best defensive effort of the year. The Seminoles played like a group of muggers, manhandling the Cardinals in a 51-7 route to raise their record to a barely respectable 4-3. The entire forward wall shined for the Seminoles. Guys like Alfonso Carriker, Isaac Williams, Todd Stroud, and Ken Rowe held the Redbirds to just 194 yards of total offense. The try played well enough to make a SWAT team radio for some assistance. And they did what Seminole coaches and fans have been waiting for all season long. They finally gelled and they became a brass knuckle unit, Gene. It was a great defensive performance. Thinking of defense, I think back to these two series. There hasn't been much defense by either team. You no. go back to the Fiesta Bowl, high-scoring affair, and then in 79, the Seminoles scored 31 points on Arizona State, which supposedly had a good football team. Let's go back to the series. One team has won one, and one team has lost one. A dozen years ago, back on December 27, 1971, with one of the most dazzling offensive shows in college football history. Arizona State managed to score with 34 seconds remaining in the game to beat Florida State and capture the first ever Fiesta Bowl 45 to 38. 32 points went on the board in the second quarter alone. With just over two minutes left in the half and with Florida State leading 21 to 14, Sun Devil quarterback Danny White went to work. Yeah, the same Danny White who plays for the Dallas Cowboys. He hit Steve Holden in stride with his 55-yard scoring pass, and that's tied it at 21 apiece. At that point, with quarterback Gary Huff at the controls, the Tribe went to work. Huff hit Kent Gatos with a 46-yard gain down to the Sun Devil 10. With time running out, Rhett Dawson pulled in his second touchdown pass of the game, and Florida State led at halftime 28-21. The third quarter was all ASU. The Devils held the ball for nearly the entire quarter, putting 10 points on the board and led 31 to 28 heading into the final stanza. Florida State tied it at 31 all on a field goal by barefooted kicker Frank Fontes. Then Holden stung the Seminoles again, this time, big time. With some great blocking, he returned a Dwayne Carroll punt 63 yards straight up the gut for the touchdown. Florida State came back to tie it again, though, as Dawson made a sensational touchdown catch with four minutes and 44 seconds left in the game. It was now tied at 38 apiece. But Arizona State mounted a final drive in this seesaw battle that resulted in a Woody Green score with just 34 seconds left to provide the final margin. The last meeting came four years ago on September 15, 1979, in the rain in Tampa, and it was all Florida State. The Tribe exploded for 17 second quarter points and never looked back on their way to a lopsided victory over the Sun Devils. Turnovers spelled ASU's fate on that night as a pair of Monk Bonasort interceptions and a Ron Simmons fumble recovery each led to Seminole scores. That two-headed quarterback named Wally Jim Jordan played brilliantly. Wally Woodham passed for 225 yards and a touchdown while Jimmy Jordan threw for another 155 yards and two more scores as the Seminoles swamped the Sun Devils 31-3, and that evened the series at a game apiece. The rubber game of this infant series coming up in just a couple of moments here on Channel 6. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll take you to the Valley of the Sun and look at those Sun Devils of ASU. Although they have only lost once in six games, Steve Pacetti now profiles Florida State's opponent tonight, the run-and-gun Sun Devils of ASU. Like the Seminoles, the Sun Devils have had high points and low points this season. The high point came two weeks ago in the Los Angeles Coliseum, where ASU dominated USC in a 34-14 win. In that game, the inconsistent ASU offense gelled around quarterback Todd Hans and running back Daryl Clack. Clack's just a sophomore, but regarded as the top all-purpose runner in the Pac-10 already. 
On this day, he had more than 250 yards, 80 on this touchdown pass from Hans. Black's teammate in the backfield is fullback Tex Wright, who can catch the ball as well. It gives the Devils an offense that's very hard to defense most of the time. And I'm comfortable. I feel comfortable. But then again, you know, I still want to improve myself on everything I do, running and catching the ball, you know, and so forth. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. I'm satisfied with the way things are going right now. We ran the ball to compliment the bass, and it helped us in a great deal. Clax played only five of ASU's seven games, but has rolled up nearly 900 yards on the ground and in the air. But in the two games when Clack was out, the Sun Devil offense became predictable, and it sputtered. First, it was UCLA. Without Clack, ASU was forced to pass, 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 and ran up a 26-10 score against the Bruins. But without a running game to protect that lead, ASU wore down in the second half and had to settle for a controversial 26-26 tie. But to the players' credit, they didn't let that get them down. We, we're a good team. We can bounce back from anything, so I, I'm not worried about that. ASU came back to win two in a row, but then last week again, Clack was injured. And again, the passing game became too predictable when ASU needed points. Todd Hans has great stats the last few games. 50 of 71 for 667 yards and four touchdowns. Last week, another game over 300 yards in the air, but three of those passes were intercepted. Washington State has its first win in the Pac-10, 31-21, and ASU's Rose Bowl plans were put on hold indefinitely. You're going to have your faults when, when you don't have Daryl and the running attack. I don't think we had a running attack that we usually have. The Devils live by the run on offense. They die by the run on defense, especially when the running comes from the option. Washington State confused ASU defenders all night with runs off the option and against the flow. Well, it was a little confusing out there. They, you know, just knew what to do when we were in a certain defense and knew what to put us. They were putting us in a defense that we didn't want to be in. Against a more conventional offense, the young Sun Devil defense can be awesome. Their trademark, the Blitz. 29 quarterback sacks this season. That's ahead of last year's record-setting pace. The main man of the assault is safety David Fulcher, a big, fast, sure tackler with a flair for the unusual. He has six sacks and an interception to his credit and a rather unusual hairdo. It's my, uh, my arrow. I, uh, when I was in high school, a couple of guys had arrows in their head, and I just wanted to try it out, and, and so far it's brought me success. You know, I just, everybody said it's the arrow that's doing the job, so I think I just, I did it last night so I can, you know, see what happens this game, and it seemed like it tur turned out to be a good game with the arrow in there, so I'm just going to leave it in there. The big question mark is the defense. Obviously, it's vulnerable against a varied attack, but Coach Darrell Rogers doesn't plan to abandon the blitz, which led his team to a number one defensive rating last season. They're going to be able to blitz against this football team. We hope so, Bill. I, I can't tell you, but I know we're going to play hard. On the Sun Devil side, look for an aggressive defense, testing the medal of quarterback Kelly Lowry and the versatility of Florida State's offense. For ASU's offense, look for Daryl Clack. Despite the Devils' impressive air game, without Clack and the run, ASU might be grounded. I'm Steve Pacetti for Channel 6 Eyewitness Sports in Tempe, Arizona. There is no doubt about it, Bob. The Arizona State Sun Devils are for real. I think that tape indicates it. The tape we've looked at, uh, they're a tough football team. How are the Seminoles going to attack it? We'll see you in a moment. Tell you up top, the Seminoles have a tough nut to crack tonight. Gene, you spoke with the Brain Trust of Florida State all week long and a number of Seminoles. The What's best way the to school? describe Arizona State is big, fast, and explosive. The Sun Devil offense compares to Pitt in size and to the Seminoles in explosiveness. Quarterback Todd Hans is a great one. Stopping Hans won't be easy tonight. I mean, Arizona State has a great offense. They have the skill put the people. They remind you a lot of our offense. Uh, they throw the ball, but they also run. They run real well, and uh, so we got to stop both the run and the pass. What sort of quarterback is Todd Hans? Very good quarterback. He's a sharp kid. This is his second year as starter, and uh, they say the, the biggest improvement they've had this year was their quarterback. And uh, he can read coverages real well. He knows where his receivers are. He knows where to go to the second and third guy if the first two are, fit, are covered. So he's a smart quarterback, very smart. Washington State stung ASU last week with an aggressive pass rush that finally wore down the Sun Devil passing game. Without a strong rush, the Devils can kill you. Yeah, they got a great offense. The line is going to be as physical as, as we ever met. A real big, they got a couple 300-pounders. And the quarterback is one of the best. And the running backs are very physical, and they can run pretty strong. So we're going to have to play a pretty good ball up front. 
Arizona State doesn't have to throw the ball to beat you. They can run the ball, too, particularly if sophomore sensation Daryl Clack is healthy. That can cause a lot of problems for the Seminole linebackers. In order to play good against the run game at, at Arizona State, the linebackers, the linebackers are going to have to play good force technique as far as playing the linemen off of us to get to the running backs. So, you know, the linebackers are going to play a vital role in this game. you got to think about Daryl Clack first. He's the big running back. He's like James Jones at Florida was last year. He's big enough to run over you, and he's quick enough to run by you. He's a super back. There's no question about him. we got to use our techniques as far as tackling. we got to lock up and drive, you know. He's going to try to run over us, and we've got to, you know, give it our best. The Sun Devils are averaging 435 yards a game in total offense. It will be very tough stopping them tonight. On the other hand, moving the ball won't be easy either. ASU led the nation in defense last year, and despite losing seven starters off that 82 team, the Devils are almost as tough this fall. They feature a very aggressive, blitzing style of D. You know, if we can pick up their blitz and hopefully bring them out of the blitz, that we think that we'll be able to move the ball. And see, that's the whole plan of their defense is to be able to pressure the quarterback, make him make mistakes, make the whole offense make mistakes. And if we make them play a base defense, then I think we'll be able to move the ball. That's the key, stopping the blitz of Arizona State. And the Seminole game plan has a few new wrinkles to attack the dogging devil. Well, they've had trouble in the past with option, and we plan on giving them uh, a big share of option attack. I think we can execute it against it. Anytime you're playing against a man-to-man -man defense, we run the coverage off and we pitch the football. If we get out of the corner, we get big plays. And we can throw the football against them. Uh, Kelly Lowry is intelligent enough to read the blitz and uh, check the proper audible. This may be Kelly Lowry's toughest assignment of the season, reading the blitz, checking off, and executing. I look for him to blitz, come after us, and, uh, and then if, we, if we can hit him with big plays, then we can get him out of all that. But you just never know. You know, we got to go. That's a long trip out there. And, we just want to come over with, with a W. Seminoles are on a roll now, two in a row. Yeah, we're on a roll, and you know, a lot of seniors on this team. We have a lot of pride, and it's our last, you know, our last four games coming up, and uh, we just want to win, you know, really bad, and get in, get back in that top 20, and then go get a bowl. Back in the top 20, and go get a bowl. Kelly Lowry speaks for the rest of his teammates on the Seminole team, and he speaks for head coach Bobby Bowden. The subject of bowls is high on the mind of everybody involved with FSU football. Well, last time these two teams played, you had a ball game. It was score was 41 to 35 or something like it. It was way up high, a bowl game. Uh, one of the most exciting ball games there ever was. People who saw it said, I didn't see it. And uh, maybe back in 73 or something like that, too. And so both, uh, both teams have still got the same type of football team, wide open, offensive sets, gamblers, uh, not afraid to to try anything, and uh, it makes for an exciting football game. Any, I don't see how these two teams could ever play in a double ball game. How important is a win for Florida State? They're all important, I know, but you'd like to keep this streak going, I know. Well, yeah, we need it. We're trying to, we're trying to have a, come out with a winning year this year and have a good year and maybe get a bowl bid. It's what we'd like. Team should. It's that good, but uh, gee whiz, if we don't win the close ball games, we're not going to go anywhere. And uh, so we need this win real bad. Of course, they do too. But uh, we want it bad. They're going to they're gonna have to really line up and do it to us because we, we, we need the game bad. Kelly Lowry spoke earlier of seniors and pride on Florida State. Well, there is also the baby brigade of FSU, and we'll take a look at those young fellows in just a moment. and go to a bowl, maybe be even be number one. It hasn't turned out that way. There are a lot of rookies and sophomores in the lineup, and they'll be there tonight, Bob. If you're a reporter covering Florida State football, you see them every day, but generally don't recognize them by name. At least not at first. They are the rookies, and in some cases, sophomores, with great high school credentials, but not yet proven ability in big-time college football. They are young, restless, and itching to play. All we needed was a chance. Me and Todd, you know, they let us in there. We're both sophomores, and, and we can play. We knew that all along. We just had to prove it to the coaches in practice. While most coaches hesitate to play unproven, inexperienced players in crucial ball games, Bobby Bowden is the exception. It's been good for us because young people have a lot of enthusiasm, and it brings a lot of enthusiasm and excitement in there. They'll make mistakes, they'll do foolish things at times, pick up a foolish penalty, but they do give a lot of enthusiasm. I think the young ones that we have played uh, uh, interspersed with our uh, veterans has, have, have, has given us a lift. Most rookies automatically get assigned to scout team duty or the JV squad. Very few come into camp knowing they'll get an instant shot at stardom. One exception to that rule is freshman punter Lewis Berry. It feels great. I love it. You know, you know, not many people get a chance to do what I'm doing. And I'm just real happy that I can contribute to the team. Some youngsters get their shot by default. 
When kicker Mike Rendina was ruled academically ineligible, freshman walk-on Barry Barco stepped in to take over. I wasn't really sure when I came in. I knew I had a good shot. Um, the position seemed to be open, so I just wanted to d give it my best shot, see what I could do. And there are other restless youngsters who have moved into starting roles on both sides of the line. Sophomores Dan Morris and John Iannata have seen plenty of duty on the offensive line. Both have started. I'm just getting out there and playing on some emotion and just some ability, and I just got to get the technique down, and I'll be doing a lot better. It's important to have that emotion, though, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Uh, emotion is 95% of this game, and you need it out there. Defensively, Todd Stroud moved ahead of veteran Brad Foytick at nose guard and has started three games in a row. And sophomore Isaac Williams is pushing three-year starter David Ponder at tackle. See, it's like with me and Todd, it's, we've never been there before, and we're, we're trying to stay there. You know, and we're fighting to stay there, and we're having, and we're having fun, you know. And it's not like it's monotonous, or, and we're not getting complacent or anything like that, because we just got there. We have no reason to be complacent. <laughs> Isaac Williams, Todd Stroud, Dan Morris, John Iannata, Barry Barco, Lewis Berry. They are the young and the restless, just waiting for a chance and proving when they get that chance, they can play the game. Those are only a few of the young and the restless. There are, of course, more. There are Cletus Jones. Uh, you're going to see some uh, Ulysses Roberson tonight in this ASU Freddie game. Freddie Jones. Freddie Jones. Those guys are going to get some playing time. And we all forget about Rosie Snipes. He's almost <laughs> a veteran. Before we leave you, a couple of thoughts. Look for Florida State to run the option time after time tonight. ASU can't stop it. Also, look for Kelly Lowry to take a two-step drop and hit the wideouts. They can't stop that either. Worked on it all week in practice, Bob. It's going to be a great game. Can't wait. That is our show. Stay tuned for Larry and Barry, Larry Metzen and Barry Smith who will be handling the play-by-play -play in color tonight. I'll see you at halftime with scores and highlights. Where the Seminoles battle the Arizona State Sun Devils. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Coors. The best of the Rockies is yours. The clean, fresh taste of Coors coming through all the way to you. Live via satellite from Sun Devil Stadium, here are Larry Matson and Barry Smith. Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Larry Matson along with Barry Smith and a packed crowd of 70,000 expected here tonight to see Arizona State and Florida State and two high-powered offenses. Uh, Larry, you're right. Uh, both teams are ranked in the top ten when we talk about total offense and scoring offense, and I think you're going to see a wide-open game. Of course, there is one question mark concerning Arizona State right now, and that would be Daryl Clack, their outstanding tailback. Well, Daryl Clack uh, against Washington State uh, encountered a hip pointer. He's questionable right now, and talking with their coaches, they may hold him out uh, because it's a non pack conference game. And two question marks facing uh, Florida State would be Jesse Hester and Kelly Lowry. Well, last week, Jesse Hester, of course, had the neck injury, and Kelly Lowry is uh, nursing a weak ankle. If I talked to Don Falls before the game, he expects him to be 100% and ready to go. Bobby Bowden and Daryl Rogers, two outstanding coaches. Bobby, of course, becoming the winningest coach in Florida State history. Well, unfortunately, neither coach has had a chance of playing against one another. This is their first encounter. Of course, the last time they met, Florida State was victorious, and we had the victory back in Tampa. And the first time these two teams met happened to be right here in the first Fiesta Bowl ever, and Barry Smith participated in that one. Well, Larry, there's really not a lot to say about that one. We were on the short end of the stick, but it was an exciting game, and I hope tonight we're going to see some more fireworks. I would think that the uh, real key to this game may be the rushing defense of, of each ball club. Well, that's the one thing that concerns me. Right now, Arizona State is ranked number 18th in the country in total defense, and they do a very good job against the rush, and it's uh, going to be a key tonight. Both teams rank nationally in the top 10 in scoring and in offense, so it should be an exciting game. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. Our visibility, they say, is 35 miles, and from where we're sitting high above the stadium here, we can see out forever, it seems, with the lights of uh, Scottsdale and Tempe and Phoenix all around us. It is absolutely gorgeous here, Barry. I tell you what, it was a great afternoon to play some golf. Uh, too bad we didn't. Yeah, well, maybe <laughs> next time. Maybe next did. time. Now, a lot of the people will be seeing uh, 
in the uh, television uh, screens the garnet and gold. Don't be misled because the Arizona State colors here happen to be maroon and Aztec gold, very similar to Florida State. There are some Florida State fans here tonight, but uh, be aware that most of the fans here will be highly partisan for Arizona State. As we mentioned, a beautiful night for football. They're expecting the temperatures to drop to into the 70s uh, during the course of the game because this is a night game here in uh, the southwest of the country in, in Arizona. Florida State wearing their white jerseys tonight with the gold pants, and uh, we'll be seeing them kicking off here shortly. The stadium is not yet packed. It's sold out, or very nearly sold out, over 70,000 expected. But, Barry, you were telling me that they come early, they come late and leave early mostly. Well, uh, yes, last night I had a chance to fly up with uh, Greg Meyer, who's on the ASU coaching staff, and he mentioned they have uh, some strange fans here. They like to come late and they leave early no matter what. <laughs> so we'll see the action here in just a bit. As we get underway, Daryl Rogers, the head coach of Arizona State, and you played here on, in this stadium, the very first Fiesta Bowl, returned a kick for 49 yards, caught a long pass down to the one or two yard line in a, in a high powered, high offensive game, and we expect something similar tonight. Well, Larry, it certainly does bring back some memories coming back to uh, Tempe here. The only thing is the stadium is uh, about, I think, 25,000 uh, seats larger than it was back then. Only thing is both offenses are just like they were back then. They're high powered, and I, I hope to see uh, a great scoring a game. We're going to get a good look at an All-American kicker here to start this game off. Luis Zenhund of Zendejas. Zendejas. And Zendejas has had a tough time field goal-wise the last six quarters of his career. But uh, he's the greatest kicker in Arizona State history. And deep will be Rosie Snipes. Zendejas has booted it. And it is going deep into the end zone, about eight yards deep. Snipes will take it there and just sit it down. It will be first and ten for the touchback at the 20-yard line. So Florida State will have the first opportunity to get the high-powered offense cranked up, and I would think that, that the running game is going to be very important in this one tonight to see which defense can stop the other's running attack. Well, Larry, I think you're right in that. There's no question that both teams would like to have some sort of ball control tonight and, and keep the other offense off the field. And as you can see, Jesse Hester is starting tonight as one of the wideouts, and he has a, a sore neck, but it won't keep him out of action. High backs for Lowry and the quick pitch right away, and it's going to be Allen to the outside. He gets about four yards. So Greg Allen stopped by Jimmy Williams, the one of the inside uh, linebackers, and they've got two outstanding linebackers there, Jimmy Williams, number 45, and Greg Battle, number 37. A defensive line is big and strong, and the linebackers, as we mentioned, uh, perhaps the strongest part of this defense. And the secondary, of course, we'll be talking about throughout the game. They'll be making a lot of the plays we expect because this is going to be that kind of a game where the play may be in the secondary throughout. Second down six, Lowry to throw, and it's incomplete. Intended for Tony Johnson out of Dothan, Alabama. Tony is senior, and it'll bring up third and six. You know, Larry, tonight we're going to see ASU play uh, quite a bit of man-to-man -man defense. It's a defense that they uh, feel that they can play with any team uh, in the country. And, of course, one I think Florida State is going to have a good test tonight. Ouija Thompson coming in from the sideline with a play. And Ouija will be lining up wide right in the slot with Tony Johnson even farther out. That's Ouija at the bottom of your screen in the slot in the backfield. Third and six. Lowry, he's got a complete... Out of the backfield and down to the 31-yard line for a first down is Greg Allen. Allen stopped by Dale Walton. Walton, the strong safety, a junior out of Oceanside, California. Well, Larry, this is a good play on third and six. You're going to see uh, Greg Allen. He just It's a very basic play. He's going to run out in the flat. The coverage is off, and he makes a smart catch because he is one yard past the uh, line of scrimmage. I mean, you know, the first down marker where he needs to be. And we got the first down. So it's first and 10 at the 32, and it's a split backfield now offensively with wideouts left and right. And a little inside handoff, and Greg Allen's got some running room out near the 45-yard line. He'll be down at the 44. David Fulcher, number seven, making the stop. He's the free safety, and he was a wide receiver who is now, as a sophomore, playing in that free safety spot, a starter from Los Angeles. Arizona State has recruited a number of players out of California. I guess that's their recruiting hotbed area. It is now first and 10 at the 44-yard line. High backs. The deep back again is Allen. In motion is Thompson. He'll come back the other way now. And the pitch to Allen. 
hit at the line of scrimmage and scrims his way forward to about the 47 yard line where Brian Noble makes the stop he's the outside linebacker on the left side out of Anaheim California had played junior college that's another thing that Arizona State likes to do is go after the junior college players well you know they've uh, got this running back well we've got Roosevelt Snipes that came out of junior college ranks and of course there Mike Crawford the running back that may fill in for Della Clack tonight is also from uh, the Juco leagues it is second and eight with eye back from the 47 yard line a quick drop he wasn't open left so he came back to the right and it's complete to Jesse Hester Hester falls out of bounds to stop the clock at the Sun Devil 45 yard line and that should be enough for a first down it is this is a good read by Kelly Lowry he wanted to go to Ouija Thompson of course he was covered he came back to the secondary receiver which is Jesse Hester running a quick out he kept his feet in bounds made a fine catch for the first down Jesse a junior from Bell Glade Florida Six feet, 175 pound junior. It is first and 10 at the 45 with eye backs again and wideouts left and right. Play action pass and Lowry finds his man. It's complete and out of bounds at the 35 yard line as Bruce Hill comes up to make the hit on Tom Wheeler, the tight end, the senior from Port Orange. KC Kelly with the uh, play action fake. Of course, they're in man to man coverage again and the tight end has single coverage and Wheeler makes a fine grab over the middle. And you can see him looking for the first down marker and very close to it. And it uh, looks like Kerry Thietz has made the tackle. Lowry doesn't look a bit hampered with that ankle at all. No, he sure doesn't. Second and one. Might see a big one here from the 35. Nope, they'll go on the ground with it. Cedric Jones. And a penalty flag is dropped. Flag is down as Mike Copeland makes the hit. He had some help from the nose guard, Mitch Callahan, 249 pound senior who was one of the starters last year when Arizona State led the nation in total defense. The year before, they had led the nation in total offense. You know, Larry, out of that defense that led the nation, there's only one returning senior on that team. There's only seen uh, Mike, Mitch Callahan, the uh, nose guard. They're going to step it off against Florida State. The legal procedure is the call, so this will bring back to about the 40-yard line and bring up a second down and, and about five for the first down, or six, really. Robert Beal making the call, the referee, and there's your look at tonight's officials. Second down and five, but it's a long five, about five and a half. Wideouts left and right again, as you see the split backfield as Lowry sends Ouija Thompson in motion. He's going to hand off Greg Allen. Hit and falls forward, though. He gets back almost to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be, uh, or before the penalty, the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and short yardage now for Florida State. David Fulcher and Frank Rudolph combining to make the hit. Rudolph the defensive end and Fulcher the free safety. Arizona State, uh, according to the local papers here today, a one and a half point favorite. And that's perhaps because of the home field advantage. So two outstanding offensive units going against each other. And Arizona State being the home team favored by a point and a half. It is third and two. And here comes an end around with Hester open and running at the 40. 35, 30. And tripped up at the 25-yard line. That's enough for a first down. They'll mark it at the 24. Mario Montgomery making the hit. And he is the fastest defensive back in that secondary for Arizona State. Of course, uh, here's Bobby Bowden going into his bag of tricks early in the game. See Greg Allen handing off to Jesse Hester. Of course, you see a good block. There's Lowry trying to throw a block. I don't know why Hester's holding the ball like that. Looks like a <laughs> little loaf of bread there. But he makes a fine run, and uh, Mario Montgomery uh, makes a tackle. And we got a first down. Saw a good look at Tom McCormick, the senior center, leading the way, too, laying a block from Panama City, Florida. Lowry on the option. He's going to keep and run, and he is off and down to the 10 and down to the 7-yard line. Lowry. First down, stopped by Bruce Hill. A good run, and certainly that ankle is no problem tonight. Kelly Lowry. We see Kelly running the option here. This is one of the uh, plays that the uh, Arizona State defense, it does not uh, defense very well. And of course, see Kelly, he runs it well for us. He makes the first down. Now, this is similar to the game when you played in 1971 when Arizona State took the opening kickoff, drove for a score. That's right. And then Florida State came right back to tie it at 7-7. Five first downs in the drive, and it is first and goal from the seven-yard line. Lowry on the option, the pitch. Allen to the two, and oh, was he hit. 
Walton really upended him. He had some help. I think Walton was the first guy to get to him. There's Ouija Thompson. You see Panton going in now, and he's going to bring in the play from the sideline. So Pete Panton will line up as a tight end wearing number 96 in a short yarded situation, second and two. And he'll bring in the play from Laurel, Florida, a sophomore, 6'2", 230. High backs, quick pitch, Allen left side. He can't get there. He's down to the one on good hard running. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage. Rudolph, and he had some help. You see Greg Allen just trying to run, to run the off tackle. He got Jamie Dukes out in front. One well, thing is, he didn't find the end zone that time. And Salamua came up to put his 285 pounds on him. A lot of pursuit that time. He is from National City, California. Dan Salamua, a sophomore, six feet, 285 pounder. He wears number 98. It's third down now and one. Third down and goal from the one. Allen up and over, but did he get in? No indication. He did not make it across the plane. It'll be fourth and goal at the, I guess, the six-inch line. Salamua, David Fulcher, rising to the occasion for the Arizona State Sun Devils, and they stopped him. Well, oh, after, uh, you know, driving almost the length of the field, and uh, ASU being kind of forced, all of a sudden they've kind of gotten tough right down there. Well, that ball is no more than a foot away from the goal line. they got to break the plane, and Bobby Bowden says, let's go for it. Fourth and goal, big play early. Quarterback sneak, Lowry doesn't get it right away. Second effort, no indication, touchdown. There it is, it was a long time coming. And the official on this side of the field called it, but the official on the other side did not. And <laughs> there is some discussion in the stands about that one as well. But Lowry gets the touchdown. And he didn't make it by much, just breaking the plane. It didn't make it on his first surge. Now we got another look at it right here. See Kelly trying to drive it in. All he has to do is break the plane of the, the goal line with the ball, and he did. And it's a touchdown for Florida State. Of course, Cletus Jones uh, did a nice job of kind of shoving him into the end zone. Now Ball's PAT is up, and it is good with eight minutes and 41 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. There is a break in the action in Tempe, Arizona, in Sun Devil Stadium with a score. Florida State 7, Arizona State nothing. And we're ready to get underway here. And that kick is going to be a line driver. Day will take it in the end zone and drop it five yards deep, and then they'll sit on it, bring it out to the 20. First and 10. So with a touchback, Arizona State will put it in play now. An 80-yard drive for the Seminoles. Putting points on the board, and Arizona State will go to work. Both kickers showing a strong lay tonight. Barco's kick going five or six yards deep in the end zone. And of course, their All-American kicker, Sandejas, booted it about eight yards deep. 14 play drive. A little over six minutes. Not a bad, not a bad job. Split backfield, the pro set now for Arizona State. Their quarterback, Todd Hans, will hand off left side. And this is Dwayne Wright, who is more known for his blocking ability than his running ability out of Dallas, Texas. Todd Stroud on the stop. Wright has gained 199 yards coming into this one, an average of 4.1. Hans, the quarterback, has passed for over 1,300 yards and eight touchdowns this year. You see the offensive set. Their tight end is a good one, Don Kern. One of the leading receivers in the offensive line. And they've been changing that up a bit, too, as we'll mention here in a moment. It is now second down and eight. Split backfield and a play-action pass with Hans going incomplete. And defensively for the Seminoles, we'll take a look at that defense. And they're going to be called on to stop one of the best offenses in the country tonight. No question about that. Character Stroud and Williams starting at the front down three linemen. The outside linebackers McLean and, and Williams. And the inside linebackers Rowe and Taylor. And at the corners, Riley and Bloodworth with the safeties Milligan and McCrary. It is third down eight at the 22. Eight minutes, two seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's 7 0 Florida State. Third down and eight. And Hans apparently checking off at the line with an audible. 
He's got some pressure on him, but he unloads it. Has a man open, but it goes incomplete out of bounds. And he was no question open. Doug Allen, who is known for his precision patterns and consistency as a receiver from Baldwin Park, California, but he was simply out of bounds. Well, Larry, that's what uh, the Florida State defense is striving to do is to get Arizona State in third and long. Of course, it makes it a lot tougher for any offense to try to get that type of yardage. Jim Meyer from Phoenix right here in this area will be kicking now, and the punting unit is on. He'll be standing at his own six-yard line. Cedric Jones will be the deep back and single safety. Seminoles might go for it here. What do you think? I don't know. This early in the game, I think I'd play conservative and try to go for the return. Well, they're dropping one deep now, and here's a low snap. But, oh, they almost got it. It's an end over end kick. Bouncing at the 46. Bouncing at the 42. The penalty flag is down. In fact, a couple of them are down. It'll roll dead at the 41. But we've got a couple of flags down. One across field and one down at around the 20. Another good look at it. See, Myers, let's see how close they come to almost blocking this. Oh, he uh, just come came close. underneath it. One of the preliminary of course, indications is offsides against Arizona State. For some wonder, it looked like he hit the kicker. If he hit him at all, should be uh, well, there. Could be offsides over here. We'll see. Legal procedure is one call. Now, is that is that the only call? Got a good look there at Ken Rowe from Cropwell, Alabama, senior. Legal procedure. And it will be declined, so Florida State will have it first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Good field position, and they're leading it 7-0 here in the first quarter. In Tempe, Arizona, Sun Devil Stadium. I was amazed when we came out uh, yesterday how clear and crisp and beautiful it was, and it was in the 80s. <laughs> and, al and also how dry like it was in the 80s. Yeah, there's no humidity out here. It's amazing. 41-yard line, first down 10. Florida State ranked fourth nationally, averaging 472 yards a game, and in scoring, averaging 35.6. But Arizona State averages 32. Now Lowry fell down. It looked like it was just a misconnection between uh, Tom McCormick and Kelly. Actually, a smart move. He just grabbed the ball and fell down. We take another look at it right here. Oh, the ball came loose for a moment, and he just cradled it. That's the type of play that gives ulcers to a head coach. Good shot there up close where you can see that ball come loose. Second down, 11 now, with seven and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Again, the score is 7-0. The Seminoles scoring on the first drive of the game, 80 yards, and driving it in 14 plays. Lowry on the option for the 43, and only a gain of a couple. Dale Walton, and along with Jimmy Williams, who is from right here in Tempe, he's a junior, number 45, six feet, 215 pounder. You know, Larry, it's kind of interesting. This early in the game, Florida State is is has a conservative game plan right now. They're not trying to throw deep. They're trying to just take what the uh, Arizona State defense is giving them right now. Of course, I suspect with the man-to-man -man coverage, we're going to see them go deep sooner or later. From the 42, it is third down and nine. And that certainly brings up a passing situation. Big blitz is on. He had to unload it early, and because of that, he goes incomplete. Cedric Jones was the intended receiver, but Lowry really had no time at all. Penalty flag is down at the 42. Good shot of Bobby. But we'll wait for the penalty call here and see what that's all about. Guess who I ran into just before the game down in the hall? You know who it was. The Bear. The Golden Bear is here, Jack Nicholas. He's in Hootie Ingram's box. I think he was in town uh, playing a uh, golf tournament or something like that. Exhibition, I believe. The flag was thrown against Florida State, but apparently will be declined, and the kicking unit is on. So we'll see Lewis Berry, the freshman, to punt. And one man deep was Tom Onofrio, who is a backup quarterback. I think he's listed as a third teamer, and he is from Missouri, Columbia, Missouri, a senior. Isn't that the show me state? That is it. And Let's see what he can show us right now. <laughs> Barry's averaging 40.8 on his punch this year, and this is a pretty good one. On a Frio at his own 10. Good coverage. He gets, oh, he scrims his way out to about the 18. Looks like he might be stopped at the 15. He got it out to the 18 yard line. So with six and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, it's still 7-0, and Arizona State will go back to work now. Only one long drive in the game, 80 yards, as Lowry took it in on a quarterback sneak. 
Hall's extra point made it seven nothing, and each team now has punted once. This crowd is somewhat subdued at the moment. 70,000 expected here tonight. That is capacity, a beautiful stadium. This is where, of course, the Fiesta Bowl is played. Last year was the first New Year's Day event for that particular bowl. And running right is Mike Crawford, who's playing for Daryl Clack. We have not seen Clack yet with a hip pointer. We may not see him. And this Crawford is from Thousand Oaks, California. Gets good running room out near the 23-yard line. Chris Larry, the key to the ASU running attack is they call them the bookends. That's James Keaton and Mike White, uh, two seniors for Arizona State. And they've done a fine job for him. And I think this is going to be the key tonight to the running attack. White is no relation to Danny White, who played here as a quarterback. He is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Keaton is from Lansing, Michigan. Second and four. And he's got the first down out to the 30-yard line. Again, it's Crawford running left this time, and enough for the first down. Arizona State's first first down is Ryan McCrary makes the stop, the free safety. And once again, you're going to see uh, Mike Crawford here run the ball. Does a fine job to see the block by uh, Mike White. You got two of them. Yeah, that's right, two of them. And he's close to the, he's got a first down. Brian McCurry, you know, on the tackle that time. At the 30-yard line, Arizona State, first and 10. Two wideouts go wide to the right. Split backfield again in the pro set. As Todd Hines rolls to his right. And on the run, overthrown incomplete. Hines is one of those junior college transfers to Arizona State. Played his high school football in Torrance, California. He completed his first varsity pass to himself. I believe there's a flag down there. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage as they're talking it over now to and they're talking with the Florida State defense. Holding Arizona State. Holding against ASU the preliminary. How many quarterbacks have you seen complete passes to themselves? <laughs> <laughs> As I understand, I think Hans's very first completion of his whole career was to himself. He threw it, it was batted down, he caught it. Okay, interesting statistic right there. He is 6'1", 182, a senior, and he had two 300-yard passing games last year as a junior. Back to the 20-yard line, holding is the call. So they'll bring up a first and 20 now from the 20-yard line. Five and a half minutes, 5.23 to be exact in the first quarter with 7 nothing to score, Florida State. They're going to send Doug Allen wide left. And they're going to split out Don Kern, the tight end. they got three wide receivers to the right side now. Well, here's a good defensive effort from Carriker, and he escapes the rush. And then runs out of bounds inside the 10, all the way back at the seven yard line. Hans had to run for his life. Carricker really putting some pressure on him. And then Rowe, I think, finally forced him out with help from Henry Taylor as well. We're going to take another look at it right here. Hans looking for a receiver. Arizona State lined up with uh, three receivers to the uh, split side. And of course, he's getting pressure right there from Alfonso Carricker and then uh, from Ponder. And he just has to run out of bounds. The, you know, a play like that is good because you have pressure on the quarterback and the defense secondary did their job. Carricker really took on the block and just forced right through the block. It is second and 33 from the seven yard line. The tailback is lined up at his own end zone. And he gets the call, Crawford right side out to about the 10. That's tough when you're facing second and 33 and you're lining up in your own end zone. You know, maybe the last two weeks has uh, done wonders for the Florida State defense. They, they have become more aggressive. That's one of the things, of course, that the uh, coaches are looking for. Isaac Williams on that stop from Sanford, Florida, the sophomore, was expected to start tonight at right defensive tackle his first opportunity here tonight on the tackle. It is now third and 30 from the 10-yard line. A little motion on the line, and of course that brought David Ponder to jump over. And the penalty apparently will go against uh, the offensive line for a legal procedure. They're talking it over now, and that'll put him even deeper down near the five-yard line, and the tailback will definitely be in his own end zone. I believe it was one of the bookends moved. <laughs> Number 35, James Keaton. Well, Keaton weighs 275 and White weighs 290. Give you an idea of what kind of a pro offensive line that Arizona State has here in Tempe. It is now third and 35 from the five. Think they'll throw it? And they've got the two setbacks rather than go to the eye. They've gone to the pro set and he's under pressure. 
unloading the screen and Crawford is hit hard and fights his way up to about the 12. And it'll be fourth and a long, long way to go and the kicking unit will come on. Steve Bloodworth on the tackle. He's starting tonight at right cornerback from Gainesville, Florida. Florida State so far in the early going is really showing, showing well and um, I think we can keep it up like that. Keep the pressure on the quarterback and running game. We may do well. Should get good field position here as Jones is standing at his own 46-yard line. Myers averaging 42 yards a kick. His longest this year has been 64. So Jim Meyer is deep, about three yards in his own end zone. Single safety for the Seminoles. And this one is very close to being blocked. End over end kick taken at the 49-yard line and running left. To the 50 and across midfield about a four yard pickup on the return but an excellent field position at the 48 yard line. Darren Tupper on the stop for Arizona State and Florida State will employ first and 10 at the Sun Devil 48. You know football uh, football is a game of field position and Florida State is working itself in better field position and if we keep it on this side of the field maybe we put some points on the board. 327 to play in the opening quarter it's still 7 nothing Florida State scoring on the opening drive of the game since then each team has had to punt it away. Slot right formation for the Seminoles. Good shot of Kelly Lowry as they send Hester in motion back to the left side and a screen pass to Allen in good defense back at the 45 yard line a loss of eight yards Jimmy Williams the linebacker they had good pressure on the quarterback because of the screen but then they had it excellently uh, defensed with the screen after the completion see Florida State going to the screen which has been one of its better plays this season unfortunately Jimmy Williams number 45 one of the great linebackers for Arizona State read the play early made the tackle and uh, second and very long. Billy Robinson was putting pressure on Lowry. Robinson, a junior from Vic Victorville, uh, California. His strength is quickness. Second and 17. A lot of time here now to throw, and he's got him overthrown. E.G. Thompson intended for Ouija, and he was out of bounds around the 30, but couldn't get his hands on the football. So that'll bring up third and 17. To get the first down, uh, the Seminoles must get to the 37-yard line. Lowry has completed four, but for only 18 yards total. I said so far, their passing attack has been on the conservative side. You know, if I was a receiver and we're playing a team like Arizona State and they go man-to-man, -man, I'd be getting excited sooner or later. Throw set offense again, wideouts on each side with the split backfield, Lowry dropping, good protection in the pocket, firing to the right side and caught. A good catch by Tony Johnson and out of bounds, and he's got enough for the first down at the 26-yard line. Kevin Craven on the stop, on the coverage, the free state team from Cleveland, Ohio. These two teams, without question, will recruit nationally, and all you have to do is look at their rosters and see where the... The players come from all over the nation. Tony Johnson, number 82, is senior from Florida State, makes a very fine reception. It's man-to-man -man coverage. He's running what we call a post corner. He winds up to the outside. It's delivered. He makes a fine catch for the first down. And on first down, a run to the left side won't get much. Cedric Jones trying to carry the ball from Valdosta, Georgia, a junior, and he didn't get much. Good defense from Arizona State. A very quiet crowd here with 70,000 on hand. Well, they've got a lot to be quiet about, right? At the moment, it's 7-0 Florida State, and the Seminoles threatening at the 25, well, the 26-yard line, where it'll be second and 10. Hester bringing in a play from the sideline now with second and 10 from the 26-yard line. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. The Seminoles threatening and leading 7-0. Let's see if Arizona State blitzes this time. Hassan Jones wide to the left. Little pressure now, and Lowry's going to have to step up. He unloads it incomplete, trying to hit Hester across the middle. Ryan Noble putting the pressure on. He is another one of those junior college transfers, number 47, a junior from Anaheim, California, played at Fullerton. The Saints have a quarterback that had played that area, of course, and Dave Wilson played at Fullerton one year before going on to Illinois. It is third and 10 from the 26-yard line. On the last third down, it was third and 17, and Lowry got the first down, going to the shotgun. He is flanked by Jones and Allen. And he's under...
under pressure. Look out. Sack time back at the 35-yard line as Billy Robinson's quickness showed there. Even with the shotgun, Lowry had no time at all. He was lucky he got the snap. Well, we talked about Arizona State liking to blitz. You know, you can see it right here. Arizona State feeling that they cannot compete with a lot of teams just going and trying to grind grind it out. So they, they like to blitz a lot. And that time, Billy Robinson, number 31, came in, made the stick on Kelly Lowry. And you can see Jimmy Williams coming up the middle, and he had help from the outside. He had three guys really all over him, and Billy Robinson was the one that really made the hit. No one back for Arizona State now in fourth and 19 from the 35. Lewis Berry will try to angle this one out. He's going for the corner. Looks like a pretty good kick. He's going to bounce at the one and go into the end zone. Oh, so close. But it is a touchback, and the ball will be brought out to the 20-yard line. He could have used one of Jack's uh, wedge shots there. Could have had it back up a bit. He would have had it made. Really had it angled down near the one-yard line, but it just bounced into the end zone. As we mentioned, Jack Nicholas is here tonight to watch the Seminoles. And at halftime, we'll be talking to Al Lawson, who's an alumnus of Florida State, a businessman, of course, and a member of the Florida House of Representatives. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. One back offense now as they send wideouts, three of them to the right side. And one back will get the call straight ahead. Dwayne Wright getting hit by Ken Rowe on the, on the carry. Wright, coming into the game, had gained 200 yards, as we mentioned, averaging a little over four yards a carry. He gets seven yards on that one out to the 27-yard line. The Arizona State coaches really like uh, Dwayne Wright because they feel he's one of those team players. He blocks well, he catches well. And, uh, of course, with a guy like uh, Mike Crawford and Darrell Clack, you need a guy like that. Second down and three from the 27. And again, it is right. He loses the football, and it appears that McLean has recovered. Florida State has recovered. It may have been Milligan who got the football or McLean. But the Seminoles recover the football at the 30-yard line. And it was Milligan who gets credit for the recovery. We well, you know early in the year, uh, Arizona State was a team that did not have very many turnovers, either interceptions or fumbles. And, of course, last week, I believe they lost three or four uh, turnovers. And tonight, once again, they, they started off where they left off last week. And it's a big play at this point for Florida State. Allen coming with 22 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And at the 30-yard line, it's first and 10. Out of the post set to the corner. And it is intercepted in the end zone. Bringing it out is Dale Walton. He's at the 20 and on the sideline across to the 24-yard line. The junior from Oceanside, California. His first interception, and it brings it out to the, well, near the 30. For a moment there, it appeared that he had Ouija Thompson in the end zone. Well, so much for the big play. I think that's going to hurt at this point. Looks like there's a Bentley flag down flag right is now. down, and we'll have to wait for that call. It's on the far side where the tackle was made. You can see Ouija is going... Uh, Kelly Lowry is going to Ouija all the way. Coast, the ball hangs a little bit. But Dale Walton, this time, instead of going man-to-man, -man, was playing deep, playing center field, and he makes the interception right there. And not only that, the penalty is going against Florida State. Personal foul. And with a 30-yard return, you tack on the extra yardage, they're going to have excellent field position as the first quarter is winding down out to the 45-yard line with the 15-yard penalty. Yeah, it looks like it was a spurring call. So with a personal foul, that's really a return of 45 yards because the interception was made in the end zone. First quarter is just about over here. Handoff straight ahead will get a few yards out to about the 48-yard line. So that should wrap up the first quarter. David Ponder on the stop for the Seminoles. And near midfield, the first quarter has come to a close. And it has been a 7-0 ball game from the first drive. And that's where the first quarter will wrap it up here in Tempe. So at the end of one quarter of play in Tempe, Arizona, the score, Florida State 7, Arizona State. Seven nothing Florida State leading as we start the second quarter of play a good look at the head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils Daryl Ro Daryl Rogers and Bobby Bowden the head coach of Florida State this series tied up at 1 1 each team having won I guess what you would consider the home game the Fiesta Bowl here for Arizona State and then in Tampa Florida the Seminoles winning there in a rain game 
Spofford gets the call here, and on second down, he gets it to the Seminole 47-yard line. It'll bring up third and short yardage. Third and two as Carricker makes the stop. Oh, well, he's had a great year, hasn't he? He sure has. Carricker is one of the uh, defensive leaders for the team, and uh, talking with the coaches last night from Florida State, they feel that Carricker, of course, is the key to this defense, and he's got to play a good, aggressive game. And Larry, I believe this is the first time Arizona State has been inside our 50-yard line. That's true. Their first penetration of the midfield stripe. It is third down three. And oh, Crawford is really belted. Ken, Ro no, it was Henry Taylor, I believe, that came up. Henry Taylor really popped him. And then we're going to see a replay here of Henry Taylor, number 58, making the stick on Mike Crawford. And that's what coaches love to see. That's good aggressive football right there. Carricker and Milligan coming up to help, but it was Taylor who really lowered the boom on him and forces the punt now. You know, those linebackers love plays like that. <laughs> <laughs> so standing deep is Cedric Jones, as you see. Jim Meyer in punt formation, standing at his own 39-yard line. Just underway in the second quarter, Florida State leading it 7-0 in a long count. Snap is away. They're going after it again. Not quite there. Fair catch is taken and fumbled and then grabbed at the 10-yard line. So Jones calling the fair catch almost gave it right back to Arizona State. And they'll mark it down inside the 10, closer to the 9, where Florida State will employ first and 10, deep in their own territory. This is a beautiful stadium. As we mentioned, the Fiesta Bowl is played here. And it has really almost doubled in size, I imagine, or maybe tripled since you played here. Well, I think back in uh, 71, the capacity was uh, a little over 50,000, maybe 55,000. Now you're over 70,000, so they've come a long way. We've had 20, 25,000 seats or so. First and 10 at the nine-yard line, going the other direction. High back for the Seminoles. And it's Allen. Well, he has to fight his way through Mitch Callahan out to about the 12-yard line, Callahan, a senior. He is the strongest player on the Arizona State squad. Bench press is 430 pounds, and he is one of the returning starters on the nation's top defensive unit last year. And as we said, I guess the lone senior. Three-yard pickup for Greg Allen. It'll be second and seven. At the 12-yard line, 13 minutes to play in the first half. mix-up or what, but it was a little pitch out on the option, and Allen is outside for a first down to the 22-yard line. Kevin Craven on the stop. A little stutter step by Lowry made me think that maybe he had uh, had a broken play there. But Allen was there for the pitch out, so I don't know. You know, what you could really see on that play is the acceleration Greg Allen has. He's such a tremendous athlete, and he's, he's a great asset to Florida State University's offense. Of course, what made that play go, besides uh, the pitch from Kelly, was a fine block by Tony Johnson, number 82, really paved the way for uh, Greg Allen making that first down. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. And not much here. Greg Allen to get on the call, and he gets out maybe, maybe a yard loss on the play. Mitch Callahan again on the stop, and as we mentioned, he is the nose guard. Well, Greg is averaging four yards a carry, 4.2. Coming into the game, he was averaging 5.9. He's picked up 825 yards, so he's closing in on the 900-yard mark in this ball game right now in the first half. Second down, 11, a loss on that one of a yard at the 21. to Jones. Jones with some running room. 30, 35, and slips and falls out to the 39. Kevin Graven gets credit for the tackle, but it was more of a slip, and he was finished off by Craven. Okay, see, Cedric Jones does a fine job this time of uh, get, picking up the first down. Of course, he gets the blocking from Jim Thomas and Dan Morris. Now, we walked out on the field today, and the field is in excellent condition. You call this a fast track. It's a very fast track. It's a combination of Bermuda and rye. Of course, back in 71, it was nothing but dirt back then. They just painted it green. <laughs> Florida State with an edge of 8-1 to one on the first down, so they marked it down at the 38-yard line. It is first and 10. Two setbacks behind Lowry. Quick drop. Throws behind him, and it's incomplete, intended for Hassan Jones. Hassan, a sophomore from Clearwater, Florida, has been one of the favorite targets of Kelly. This one goes incomplete. 
Jones is the third leading receiver on the club. He's actually tied with, with Jones, with Cedric oh, no, Thompson being the leading receiver, and Hester four catches behind him. Thompson with 25, Hester 21, Jones, uh, Hassan, and Cedric both with 18. Second down 10 from the 38. We expected a lot more scoring than this. It's seven nothing and 11 minutes to go in the half. Another option play in the pitch made it in the right time and Allen is running across midfield. One on one tackle by Craven across midfield to about the 44 yard line of Arizona State. And that was executed well by the quarterback Lowry. As we said earlier, Arizona State does not uh, defense the option real well. And, of course, Kelly in Florida State runs it well, especially with a guy like that, number 26, Greg Allen. The key to this block, or this play, is Tom Wheeler's block, number 89, springing Greg Allen for the first down. You know, Greg's stats would look a lot better, except that he had gotten in for one play against Auburn and did not get the ball on that one play, yet it counts as a game yep. for his per-game average. First and 10 from the 44. Another quick drop and a quick out. And he's got Johnson, and Johnson's down the sideline, but it's going to be out of bounds. He stepped out at the 37. He made a pretty slick move there, and for a moment, it appeared he might break it down the sideline, but he had stepped out. This is, we call this the 90 game, or actually he just runs a quick out. And you know, Tony Johnson, once again, he's been a fine receiver for Florida State for the last three years. And you see him trying to jitterbug right down there. You can see his foot right there, and he yeah. stepped out of bounds. That kind of reminds me of Roosevelt Snipes against Auburn. I was you know, going to say one the same step away thing. From, yeah, going for a TD. Exactly the same thing. Lowry, 6 of 12, one interception, 53 yards now as Hester brings into play. A good shot of him there. Bobby Bowden on the sideline. You can see Snipes getting some comments from the sideline. It is now second and three at the 37. And Lowry, the option gets tripped up. Well, they had the option taken away from him that time. Allen was really well covered. Jimmy Williams on the stop. And they had a man on the pitch man, and Lowry could not make the pitch without maybe throwing an interception. It looks like we got third and one. From the 35-yard line. And again, they'll bring in Panton, number 96, who will line up as a tight end. You know, Bobby's the gambler. and This is a situation right here that you may want to waste one and go deep. You might want to try to throw it down the field. It is third down one from the 35. And going for the first down, down to about the 33-yard line. Great battle on the stop as Cedric Jones picks up a big first down for the Seminoles. 9.54 to play in the first half. 7-0 Florida State. Opened up as an 80-yard drive, consuming a little more than six minutes. 14-play drive, and the Seminoles drew first blood. But now... The game has pretty much been a punting game, except for this drive, and the Seminoles are threatening at the 32-yard line. Each team has had one turnover, Arizona State giving up a fumble at the 30, but then uh, Lowry throwing an interception in the end zone to Walton to end that uh, possible threat. First and 10 from the 32. The quick pitch to Allen. He's got problems. He's got a lot of problems. They've got a host of tacklers out there, and that defensive unit must have had seven or eight guys all around him. It's Gaddis and Robinson combined to make the hit. You know, Florida State loves running that uh, quick pitch to Greg Allen. Only that time, as you're going to see the replay right here, that uh, Greg really didn't have any place to run. See, Jamie Duke's trying to throw a block there, but he had good pursuit uh, by uh, Greg Battle and uh, Jimmy Williams and Brian Noble there. Of course, there's a whole host of uh, defenders there in that tackle. That'll bring up second down 11, a loss of a yard from the 33-yard line. Jesse Hester is wide left, an inside handoff, a quick one, and nowhere to go on this one. And again, Allen maybe gets a yard back to the original line of scrimmage at best. Jimmy Williams making the hit, 215-pound junior linebacker. Tell you what, this defense, as we mentioned, uh, lost seven or eight players from the outstanding defense of a year ago, but they've got a lot of young players in the defense this year, and they're still, as you mentioned, I think ranked 18th nationally. Currently, they've only been given up a total of uh, 286 yards per game coming into this one. But, uh, of course, a lot of the ball players did have a chance to play last year. They still are young, but just don't have a great deal of experience. Third down 11, and Lowry under some pressure, throwing in a... Catch around the knees, is it good? Yes, it's a 22-yard line. Ouija Thompson grabbed that one at his knees and takes it out of bounds, close to a first down. 
You can see Arizona State once again coming with the blitz by uh, Kevin Gravin, number six. Of course, Ouija makes a tremendous catch right here. You know, this is what Ankle being a receiver, high. yeah, this is what's being, what is, you know, makes a good receiver is being able to come up with a big catch, and this certainly is one right here. As you see, look at him go down, concentration, tremendous. And on the replay, it's even lower than the knee. It was more like an ankle catch. And for a guy 6'6", six, six, that's a long ways down there. On the safety blitz, he was being hit. Lowry unloaded it. Did you see the chain being stretched out. It is enough for the first down. How about that? On third down 11, and the fans here unhappy with the call, Thompson comes up with a big catch. If you remember against Pittsburgh, it was almost the same type of play. Fans don't think that the feet were in bounds. Okay, we take a look at it right here. Okay, you figure he's got the ball right there. His foot is already down. So that is a catch. It's a very good call by the officials. I guess they were concerned whether he had possession of the ball, whether he juggled it. It looked like he had, had uh, made a clean catch there. Hey, that guy's got meat hooks. You don't think he used uh, tacks on his fingertips, <laughs> do you? No, I don't think I've, it's raining I've heard tonight. some receivers have done that. Here's the pitch behind the sniped and recovered by Arizona State. Billy Robinson recovering the fumble or actually really a poor pitch behind Snipes more than it was a fumble and that will stop this threat. Yeah, uh, Larry, I think you called it right. It really was a poor pitch. Uh, he didn't really get a, a good pitch to Roosevelt Snipes. Of course, Billy Robinson recovers the fumble and at this point is a, is a big play for Arizona State. David Fulcher was coming on a blitz and hit him just as he was trying to make the pitch and force the bad pitch, really, in defensive Lowry. It was Fulcher on a safety blitz straight ahead. So on the fumble recovery, Arizona State with the ball at the 33. And Hans wants to go deep down the sideline today and off his fingertips. Incomplete. He was going for the sophomore speedster. This guy has got speed. He's on the Arizona track team as a sprinter. He was a running back converted into a flanker and uh, from San Diego, California, just a sophomore. He can fly. Let me tell you what, Larry, uh, that time Eric Riley got burned and he's very, he's very lucky that Paul Day didn't come down with it. You know, that, that's a receiver's dream to be that wide open and, and, that, and that six and that could hurt Arizona State. Arizona State getting two turnovers from the Seminoles. Seminoles with one turnover in the game. Recovering a, a fumble. And off straight ahead. This one out to about the 36-yard line. 7.45 to play in the first half. Brad Foydick on the tackle from Auburndale, Florida, a senior, the nose guard. And it'll bring up now a third down and seven for the Sun Devils. From a defensive standpoint, uh, from Florida State side, this is a good position to be in third and long. I figure they've only got a few options, and if you keep them that sooner or later, it's going to come out to your advantage. And you might look for day number 22, their speedster, on this one, on third down and seven, and now whistles blow. Florida State really having a good night on third down conversions. Arizona State faced here with their third one of the night, and they have yet to get a first down, and flags went everywhere on this, so... This will be even making it tougher as they'll mark it off back to back to the 31-yard line. Now, Larry, interesting statistic. At the end of the first quarter, Florida State had held the ball for over 10 minutes to Arizona's a uh, little over four minutes. Right there. Of course, that's the key. If Florida State can hold on the ball, which apparently they're going with a conservative game plan to try to keep Arizona, keep their hands away from it. Darrell Rogers, the head coach there, pacing the sidelines. A legal procedure puts the ball back at the 31. It is third and 12. Seven minutes to play in the first half. Two widely set split backs, as you can see, in the pro set. And a quick pitch. A little surprise move here to Dwayne Wright to the outside. And Wright gets it out to about the 38 or 39, but it'll not be enough for a first down. They were lined up with a passing formation, but they kind of broke the tendency there and went with the quick pitch. And you talk about a quick pitch, that was one right there. But Dwayne Wright, you know, senior running back, uh, does a fine job, but comes up short of the first down. Pat Milligan, number 19, in on the tackle. You know, teams watch those films and scout the tendencies so much that I guess 90% of the time you'll throw from that formation. You try to break them up defensively with the uh, breaking of the tendency. Hassan Jones now is deep and not Cedric Jones. Number 88 is deep. Florida State with two other uh, upbacks around midfield, so they're not, whoa, here's a little fake now, and Dwayne Wright gets a first down to the 46-yard line. Or was it tougher? It was Wright, 46. How 
know about that now. Both coaches gambling a bit. We saw Bobby Bowden gamble on fourth and goal and get the touchdown. And now Daryl Rogers says, hey, I got a few tricks of my own. Well, you know, Larry, obviously I'm a Florida State fan, but, but my hat's off to uh, Daryl Rogers. That's a great that's a great call this uh, late in the ball, early in the ballgame. I like it. It's a gutsy call, and it's, it's needed to get Arizona State on crank. And the fake punt now gets a first down. I guess you can consider that a fourth down conversion, right? I guess so. <laughs> and whistles blowing here, penalty flag, and it may have been too much time. The offensive unit is so excited about the first down that the special teams got them <laughs> that, uh, that they didn't get the playoff in time. They're probably still talking about it in the huddle. There it is, delay of game. So at the 40-yard line, it'll be first and 15. 5.37 to play in the first half. Florida State still leading 7-0, and that was the opening drive of the game. Since then, each team has either turned the ball over or had to punt it away. Slot right formation and rolling to that side is Hans throwing and out of bounds, stopping the clock at the 45-yard line. The catch made by Jerome Weatherspoon. So with 5.21 to go, they'll have it at the 45-yard line. That gets back the five yards that they had lost on the penalty. It'll be second and, and about 11, really. You know, Todd Hans, uh, the, the, fish, the coaches like him because he's got quick feet, and he really is an excellent thrower. Weatherspoon, number 89, makes a fine reception. Nothing more than a, a quick out pattern. Slot left formation this time with the eye back. And a play action with some time and a receiver at the 45 yard line and rolling out of bounds. Apparently enough for the first down is Paul Day. Day only weighs 159 pounds and that may be stretching it a bit. What made this play Florida State was in a man-to-man -man, uh, coverage right there. And they had two, uh, ASU had two receivers on one side. Paul Day, number 22, being in the slot, running the out pattern. He's wide open, makes the catch for the first down. So it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. For Stan Moore at 934-2332. 4.54 to play. The quick pitch coming to the right side and getting some room is Crawford, and he gets it down inside the 40-yard line to about the 38. Ken Rowe making the stop, the senior linebacker from Crockwell, Alabama. Well, at this point, I think that fourth down conversion has kind of lit a fire underneath Arizona State's offense. And you can see Crawford uh, under some fine blocking running for the first down and a whole host of Florida State defenders in on the tackle that time. Second and four from the 38. Quick pitch to the near side this time. He's got some room, makes a good move across the 30. He's down the sideline. He went out of bounds. He went out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Enough for a first down going down the sideline, and that was a sure six had he not stepped out. Boy, he was off to the races. Well, we've got another angle right here, and you see Mike Crawford, number 30. And Brian McCurry, I guess, uh, forced him out of bounds. You can see him trying to gain his balance, and you can see him step Ooh, right there on the line. Yep, there you go. The second foot was more yep. than the first one. Yep. I think he realized it, too. He was tiptoeing it down that sideline. There's Daryl Rogers congratulating him and giving him a word, a bit more of encouragement. That's the 12th defensive back. Yes, it is. Wright is in there, and the handoff to the right side is Mike Cade. So Cade gets it down to the, well, the 21-yard line. So Arizona State becoming a little more aggressive. Their offensive line is doing a fine job, and once again, when we talk about Mike White and James Keaton being the key to their running attack, and right now they're getting a good surge off the ball. It is second and seven from the 21. Kate again to the left side. Rowe coming up to make the hit. He's going to get it down to the 16-yard line, short of a first down by about two, maybe three at best. It's funny how momentum changes. Boy, it is, and the fake punt right now is looming as the big play of this quarter. 317 to play in the half, 7-0 Florida State. Third down three, Arizona State at the 17. In motion, the tight end Kern. Crawford 
He's got very close and appears to have gotten the first down down to the 14 yard line. First down, Arizona State, the Sun Devils getting the first down inside the Seminoles 15. Day is coming in from the sideline now to bring in a play. You know, the, the key to that play, number 81, Don Kern, was in motion, you know, from the tight end. He came across uh, a fine block on the uh, defensive end of Florida State, making uh, way for the first down. First down 10 at the Seminole 14 with 2.51 to play in the half. They have checked off at the line going to the eye backs and the handoff straight ahead to Crawford. Carriker is there, so is Taylor. Taylor may have gotten the first shoulder into him. Carriker finished him off, and he got it down maybe to the 13. We'll give him a yard on the carry. Todd Hans, number one, looking at the sideline for a possible uh, call from there. Uh, you know, one thing I'd like to remind all the fans, in addition to the highlights of the first half, of this game, of course, we're going to be with Bob Warren at halftime. We're going to go over the scores of some of the other college games tonight on uh, Channel 6. So uh, stay tuned at halftime. Tupper and Crawford in the backfield now on second and nine from the 13. And here's a pass back to Hans, the quarterback, to the five. First down and goal and out of bounds at the one yard line. They got it to Crawford, and Crawford passing this year was two for two. He is now three for three, and he's throwing for a touchdown. That's a great play. It's another great play. You've got two fine coaches right here, and uh, both of them, yeah, both of them are trying to go, being aggressive, trying to go for the win. You're going to see Hans just pitching out to Mike Crawford. He thinks he's going to run, uh, you know, an off-tackle play or something, and, and Crawford throwing it back to Hans. He picks up the first down, almost gets in the end zone, but number nine, Steve Budworth, coming up with the TD saving tackle. Well, we expected a high-scoring game. We may not have that, but we're going to certainly have an exciting one here with a minute 52 to go. There's a timeout here in the second quarter with the score. Florida State 7, Arizona State nothing. In the gray, uncertain side of personal finance, it's real. First and goal at the 1, 152 to play in the half. Two tight ends are in. In fact, they've got, uh, well, they got Kern and Aarons and a wing back on the right side. And a handoff goes straight ahead to right, and he does not get it from the 1. He's very close. A minute 44 to go. Henry Taylor, the linebacker, really clogging up that middle. Arizona State thought they had scored. They've got it down about where Florida State had it when Lowry went in for the touchdown on a quarterback sneak, right about the foot line. So you've got Wright and Tupper, two big fullbacks in there, along with, with a tight end on each side. And let's see what they do here. The quick pitch going to the outside, and it is a touchdown by Cade. That's his first touchdown of his career a senior from Eloy Arizona has tied this game if the extra point is good it is at least 7-6 at this stage and there go the fireworks and you can see the replay right here Mike Cage just taking the pitch out of course the FSU's defense was all bunched in I figure it's going to be a quarterback sneak and Cade goes in for the uh, touchdown one yard sweep I guess we could call that I understand that uh, his brother Massey is a starting defensive back for Texas. Well, that makes it interesting at Thanksgiving time to, at home. <laughs> Zendejas, this extra point is good, but there is a flag down. We'll wait for that call before we do anything. Zendejas' extra point has apparently tied it. The flag uh, apparently going against Florida State as they're talking it over here. And we'll see it is uh, roughing the kicker, perhaps. Nope, let's see. What is... Roughing the kicker. Yep, that's what the call will be. So let's take the break with a minute 14 to go in the half. It's all tied in Tempe, Arizona. Florida State 7, Arizona State 7. A 67-yard drive in 15 plays, consuming 6 minutes and 45 seconds of time. And Cade's one-yard run and Zendejas' kick makes it a 7-7 game with a minute 14 to play. That drive started as a result of a fumble recovery at Arizona State's 33-yard line. They had a fake punt on fourth down that gave them a first down and a halfback pass for the quarterback down to the one. So they had a lot of interesting plays to keep that drive alive. You know, Larry, uh, Florida State fans remember uh, last year when we played Ohio State, we had a similar play. I believe it was a throw from Tony Smith back to Kelly Lowry for a touchdown. So it's amazing, you know, when you get a good athlete at the quarterback position, 
the different things that you can do. Keep in mind, the penalty of roughing the kicker has been assessed here, so Arizona State is kicking from their own 45-yard line. And the hands team, it appears, is out there for Florida State. They're looking for a possible onside kick. 114 to play. He's going to kick it high and short. Going to the sideline and taking it at the 12 or 13 yard line is Snipes. And he's got some room and blockers out front. He's going to run right through his blockers. He gets good running room, though, out to the 43. But had he waited for his blockers a little more, he might have broken that one all the way. Billy Robinson makes the tackle. How about that? Roosevelt Snipes, of course, from the rushing end of it, is averaging 7.2. And this gives you an idea about what kind of speed that this man has. You know, if he just waited for his blocker, Hassan Jones, he might have been able to cut to the outside and gone for a uh, fine shot right here. And this is what you call shaking and baking right here. It's exciting for running back to get into the open field like that. I was going to say, it's easy for us to say, hey, wait for your blockers. But when you see those, those maroon jerseys closing in, you don't want to wait for That's anybody. Right. I bet you they're a lot bigger down there than they are from up here. <laughs> That's right. All right, there's a minute and eight seconds remaining in the first half. The ball at the 42-yard line. Florida State has three timeouts remaining. Arizona State has two. Quick pass to Thompson, one-on-one, -on -one, and he gets out of bounds with the first down at the Arizona State 46-yard line. Bruce Hill kind of slings him out of bounds. Had he been able to break loose there, he would have been down that sideline. Well, Arizona State, Arizona State coming with the blitz again, except Florida State does a fine job of keeping them out, and uh, Kelly delivers the ball to Ouija Thompson, who is digging for the first down, and you see him right there. He's got it. Whoa, Sisson got belted along that sideline as well. Minute and three seconds to go. First half, it's all tied at seven. Kelly, eight of 14, one interception, and for 76 yards, blitz is being shown. They're going to go with a four-man rush as Lowry rolls to the sideline. He's going to go deep down the sideline and incomplete as he was... Well, falling to the turf was Ouija Thompson. Ouija, for a moment there at 6'6", looked like he might have a shot at playing a little alley-oop, but uh, Kevin Graven was with him step for step, and he got tripped up and fell. That really was a fine call by the officials. Of course, at that time, you know, you hope to see the flag thrown, but, uh, you know, Ouija just got his feet tangled up and fell on his own uh, effort there. Ouija's going to go to the sideline, and Jesse Hester will bring the play in from the sideline. Looks like Greg Allen is checking in, too. I'd like to uh, just uh, remind the fans that John Joyce uh, following the Bob Warren halftime report, we'll have a brief news update, so stay tuned. Five defensive backs in there now, the nickel D for Arizona State, and they're showing blitz, and they're coming. And Lowry's having to unload quickly, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was number 89, and that was the tight end Tom Wheeler, and it was simply a case of the defensive uh, blitz not giving uh, Lowry enough time to really set up. I think Florida State in this two-minute offense is going to see a lot of blitzing probably almost every down. And David Fulcher really put the pressure on Kelly Lowry along with Jimmy Williams and Tom Wheeler trying to make the catch, but it was uh, it was tough. Fulcher, the free safety coming. He has really blitzed three or four times tonight already. He's really a, an active guy back there in that secondary. You don't see the safety blitz that often, and to see it that often in the first half alone is, is something to see. There's a timeout call with 51 seconds to play here in the first half. Timeout. The score remains Florida State 7, Arizona State 7. Larry Matson with Barry Smith here in Tempe, Arizona. 51 seconds to play in the first half. Each team with two timeouts remaining. It's 7-7. And Florida State third down 10 at the 46. Shotgun formation. Cedric Jones running wide on the handoff, but not much room. Good running, good hard running, but he doesn't get the midfield. Mitch Callahan, the nose guard, along with linebacker Jimmy Williams, combining to make the hit. And it'll bring up fourth and 14 with a loss of four on that one. Cedric Jones trying to run the uh, the reverse draw. And unfortunately, Jimmy Williams, number 45, had other plans for Cedric Jones, and he comes up with the tackle, and uh, looks like Florida State is probably going to have to punt. Well, I want to mention here, as the first half is drawing to a close, a congratulatory note to you, Barry, for becoming a father this past week. And I understand our old friend here, Dennis Boyle, will be a father in June. That's correct. Thank you. And it's down to five seconds, down to three. They're going to let the clock run out here in the first half. We're going to go to the locker room, all tied up in Tempe, Arizona. 
on a beautiful night. The temperature is probably in the high 70s right now. So we'll have a halftime guest. Mr. Al Lawson will be along with us. And we've got a break in the action as we've reached halftime with the score all tied. Florida State 7, Arizona State. Everybody, it's halftime in Tempe, Arizona. Larry Matson along with Al Lawson here at 7-7, Arizona State and Florida State. Beautiful night for football in Sun Devil Stadium. Al Lawson is a businessman, an alumnus of Florida State, and a member of the House of Representatives for the state of Florida. We welcome you here to halftime. We're very happy to be here. As an alumnus of Florida State, we'd like to ask you some questions. And I guess the first one would be your impressions, of course, of, of the university's academic program. Well, overall, I think the university is doing an outstanding job in the academic world. You know, we have a couple of distinguished uh, professors on board. Dr. Uh, Kurt Walheim, uh, distinguished professor of international law, former Secretary General of the United Nations, and Dr. Paul DeRay, uh, Nobel uh, prize winner in physics. Uh, Dr. Reich is doing an outstanding job, you know, and this is great for the students. Uh, many of the faculty members are a member of the National Science Academy, and many of our programs have won national awards, physics, uh, 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 international law, uh, many theater, I guess I could go on and on and on. Well, as a businessman, as an alumnus, and as a legislator, what do you see as the future of Florida State and Tallahassee? Well, I think Florida State's going to have to continue to mix uh, with the business community because we are looking forward to a lot of economic growth, not only in Florida, but in Tallahassee. I think that the university is going to continue to have to reach out in the community to our state workers, offer more continuing education, and develop more and more in the high-tech, high-touch area. But I think overall that we must also keep our concentration on the arts and sciences because it's very important for a well-rounded education. Of course, from time to time you hear about a possible merger between Florida State and Florida A&M University. What are your thoughts on that and what are the possibilities? Well, I don't think that the possibilities are great right now. I am personally opposed to a merger. I've talked to the un both university presidents and uh, they are opposed also to a merger. I think both of the institutions play a very vital role and have distinct histories. And I think they'll make an outstanding contribution not only to Tallahassee, the state of Florida, the nation, but the world. And I think that uh, no one have ever been able to come up with any particular savings that uh, we would have in the university system by merging these two schools. You're a former athlete. Uh, what are your thoughts on the academics and the athletics? Uh, is athletics maybe perhaps too much emphasized? I don't think so. I think athletics plays a very important role in the education of our youngsters. It provides scholarship. And if you re can remember, uh, on one of the tele televised, national televised games, the athletic department gave about $100,000 to the university academic side. I think that, uh, that it's very important that athletics gives the university academic programs a great deal of exposure throughout the country and aid in recruiting. All right, Al, thank you very much for being with us here tonight. Very good to be with you. Al Lawson, it's halftime here in Tempe, Arizona. The score all tied. Florida State 7, Arizona State 7. It's all tied at 7-7 as we open the third quarter of play here in Tempe, Arizona. Larry Matson along with Barry Smith. Florida State will be kicking off right to left as we view it. And uh, we're underway in the third quarter. Expecting to be a high-scoring game here. It's just been 7-7 throughout the first half. Each team with one really good sustained drive. Florida State getting the opening drive. Turn around, Jack. We've got Jack Nicholas here. And uh, let me just say very quickly, you're here not only to open up a golf course, but helping to support Florida State with your presence. Well, I'm out here to open a golf course and just conveniently be able to go to the <laughs> ball game. It's really a pleasure for me. Of course, your son plays for Florida State, and I know you like to see him get in some action. Yeah, I was kind of looking forward to a 28-7 to halftime so we get to play some in the second half. <laughs> All right, Jack, good luck to you. Thanks, Thanks for being sir. with us here at halftime. Good for being here. All right, the Golden Bear here at halftime, and now let's get back to football action. First down and 10, Arizona State at the 20-yard line on the touchback, and a handoff straight ahead. Again, this is their big fullback, and, and I guess uh, one thing we haven't mentioned much about, Dwayne Wright picking up uh, some yardage straight ahead, the first half stats, uh, really uh, not at what we expected it to be. 89 yards rushing for Florida State, 71 Arizona State, the passing 76, only 35 for Arizona State, and totally 165 to 106 way down from what you'd expect from two high-powered offenses. So really, let's give credit to both defenses tonight, really containing two of the nation's most potent attacks. Quick pitch to the outside out to about the 24, and 
It'll bring up third down six. One thing we have failed to mention, though, I guess, is the fact that Daryl Clack really has not seen any action. We said at the opening we did not expect him to, to get in the game because of a hit pointer, and he has not been in there. Well, so far, of course, Mike Crawford has done an outstanding job for Arizona State taking the, uh, taking the place of Daryl Clack. Once again, it's a non-pack conference game, and, of course, that might be a, a, a determination on that. It is third down and seven, and Hans, under some pressure, won't get it away. Back at the 11-yard line, David Ponder, the senior from Cairo, Georgia, breaks through and makes a big tackle. And that'll force a punt, and not only that, give Florida State perhaps an excellent field position. Hans has passed for almost 670 yards in the past two games. He had two 300-yard games last year as a junior and now this year he's had uh, uh, three of them so he is well down from his average and only 35 yards in his first half well if we can keep pressure on him like uh, Ponder showed that last play it's gonna be tough for him to get any anything like that tonight Jim Meyer is deep in punt formation about three yards deep in his own end zone he gets it away Hassan Jones fields it at the 33 gets a block and gets good field position for the Seminoles out to the 38-yard line. That was a beautiful kick. He really belted that one. Meyer was three yards deep in his end zone and knocked that one 55 yards. Larry, I've just been told that uh, Greg Battle, the outstanding linebacker for Arizona State, number 37, is out with a sprained ankle and probably will not play the second half. And of course, that, that, that could hurt or Arizona State. Willie Green's going to have to take the slack on that one. Green is a senior, Battle a sophomore, but Battle was a starter last year on that outstanding defense as a freshman. This is Greg Allen and Billy Robinson wraps him up. This has been much more of a defensive battle than we thought it would be. We thought it, could, it had the, the feeling of being a... Uh, an 80 or 90 point ball game. Because it shows you how much we know about football, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no yeah, but I think, you know, both teams are uh, still playing a little conservative from the offensive standpoint, except for, you know, a few plays there tonight. But I think they want a control type offense, trying to keep the other team away from the ball. Arizona State 4 1 and 1 on the year, and they're looking toward a bowl game. Florida State 4 and 3, certainly looking at a bowl game with a victory here tonight, would get that uh, impetus going. And off the fingertips of Greg Allen and complete Jimmy Williams on the coverage. That Williams has been just about everywhere, whether it's been a, a short yardage play up the middle, a sweep to the outside, or a pass, it seems he's around the ball. Well, Florida State is going to have to become more effective in not only protecting the quarterback, but also throwing the pass and getting the receivers down the field that time. If you're throwing to Greg Allen out in the flat, he's on the line of scrimmage, he's still got 10 yards to go. We're going to have to get the backs up the field against man-to-man -man coverage. All right, third down conversion, six of ten for Florida State. It is now third and ten from the 38. And Lowry, with a quick drop, is going to fire incomplete, and he tried to hit Ouija Thompson, and it was behind him. Bruce Hill, the cornerback on the coverage, who's only 5'11". Thompson is 6'6". Six, six. You know, once again, uh, Jimmy Williams uh, from Arizona State coming in on the blitz. And Greg Allen, uh, Kelly Lowry not able to deliver the ball to Ouija Thompson, and it's an incomplete pass. There are five bowls represented here tonight. Fiesta, of course, being uh, the home stadium of the Fiesta Bowl, the Blue Bonnet, the Holiday Bowl, and the Sun Bowl among them. You've got a special note on the other one. Here's the kick. And on a Frio will take it at the 24-yard line. Makes a nice move, but didn't get anywhere with it to the 27-yard line. That fifth bowl being the Citrus Bowl. The last night I had a chance to talk to um, a couple individuals that represented the Citrus Bowl, and of course they mentioned a great deal of interest in having Florida State coming down to Orlando for the Citrus Bowl. Of course, it used to be known as the Tangerine, and uh, they mentioned a possible matchup between us and Air, uh, Ohio State, which of course uh, Ohio State being a very fine ball club, might be a good matchup. Well, that would be a great one. Big Ten against the Southern Independent. First and ten at the 27-yard line. 12.06 to play in the third quarter. It's all tied 7-7. That was Kern in motion, and now the pitch to Crawford to the outside, and he gets maybe to the 30-yard line, a gain of two. Kern is 6'4", 210, a senior tight end, and he is from Los Gatos, California. Went to junior college there. We have not seen much of him in this ball game, and he is their leading receiver with 23 catches. Their passing attack has really been shut down, although he hasn't thrown really that much. And uh, in the first half, 
Hans was only three of six, so he's only tried it six times. And here he is throwing, and this time he's got to complete across the 40. And here we go with Kern on close to midfield at the 48. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. He was quiet <laughs> until I mentioned that. Makes a big catch, and Pat Milligan makes the stop. The senior strong safety. Well, Hans here on the play fake, and he's, he's looking for uh, Don Kern all the way. Don Kern, the uh, starting tight end, the senior for Arizona State, makes a fine catch, and he's got the first down. He's got good size. He could probably gain 20 or 30 more pounds. At 6'4", 210, he's got the framework. It's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Eye backfield and the quick pitch out of the eye. Crawford across midfield into Seminole territory at the 48. Isaac Williams and Steve Bloodworth combining to make the hit. Two sophomores. Isaac Williams from Sanford and uh, Steve Bloodworth from Gainesville. We've got a player down, uh, Larry. I think uh, Steve Bloodworth, number nine. And he is the young man from Gainesville, as we mentioned, 5'8", 165 pounder, a sophomore, and he's got about 163 pounds of guts. He is really, <laughs> really strong. He's got a hand. Looks like it may have been his hand that he banged up. And may have been a nerve. He's there working with his shoulder, too. It is now second and six. Hans throwing. He's got to complete inside the 30. Nice catch coming across the middle. Eric Riley making the hit on Jerome Weatherspoon, the senior wide receiver, number 89. Hans looking for Weatherspoon all the way. What makes this play, Florida State is in a man-to-man -man coverage, and uh, Weatherspoon running a fine square in pattern. He finds the hole right there in front of Eric Riley. And Arizona State has a first down. He's got almost as many yards on this drive as he had in the first half. And throwing the football, first and 10 at the 29-yard line. They reset the offense into an eye-back formation, and it's Crawford. He was hit almost right away by Brad Foydick, the nose guard. And he's going to get it down maybe to the 28-yard line, a gain of a couple of yards. And uh, I guess officially they'll call it one. It'll be second and nine. You see Daryl Rogers there without the hat. And it'll be second down nine from the 28-yard line. to the right is Hans and he gets a reception and short of a first down this one again to Weatherspoon you can see the first down marker there and he stepped out of bounds at the 21 yard line Weatherspoon uh, make another fine reception and Todd Hans seems to have found uh, the touch right now he's he completed two in a row and um, Arizona State is driving well he hasn't uh, thrown to Weatherspoon very much this year in fact he is he has gone to uh, Kern and Day and Allen and Clack. Weatherspoon had 11 receptions coming into the ball game, and he's picked up a couple right here on this drive. Third down and three. This one batted away, and he almost caught his own pass. He's had two receptions in his career, his first pass, and then he had the reception in the first half to get the drive alive. Carricker batting that one away, incomplete. It'll bring up fourth and three, and we may see the field goal kicker, the All-American, Luis Zendejas, who has not had a field goal in six quarters. We'll take another look at this. You see Alfonso Carricker really getting high, batting that ball down, and looks like Posse going to save us at least a touchdown. And this one will be a try from the 29, so make it a 39-yard attempt. Zendejas, the leading scorer in Arizona State history, is long enough, and it is good. So he connects on a 39-yard field goal, and there's a timeout here in Tempe, Arizona, with nine minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The score now, Arizona State 10, Florida State.